Hi guys, welcome back to the MHI Roundtable. Today I'm joined by my good friend and doc, uh, Dr. Rudy, and we're going to have a conversation about men's health. Um, one of the things that we've seen out there, we've seen the data, we've seen the science, and just from a practical perspective, I mean, doc, it's like the guys are in trouble out there today. Listen, masculinity is under attack. You know, we've had a talk with Dr. Anthony J about the estrogenics and the effect that this has on our hormonal life. Yeah. And more specifically, again, my passion and, and what we love doing is men's health. Yeah. We see women in our practice also, but really me, I've focused myself on men's health because we are seeing that men are in trouble. There was an amazing uh, article in the New York Times. Um, the title was, you will never be the man your father was. Right. Because we've seen within those generations that men have are not keeping up their part of the yeah. bargain. And again, you know how we are. And that's we don't such like a to bleak, be, like, you know, it, it kind of really article, is. right? And, and we don't want to blame the victim. So what have we been seeing? Let's go over some statistics. Um, the, from the 1940s compared to now, 70% of enrolled um, in, in graduate school, in, in college, were males. Right. Now it's down to 40%. Again, I'm happy about the rise of, of, the rise of, of, of women, of females, right. but boys are going down. Yeah, it's not a competition to say yeah. that boys need to be ahead, but the fact that we're going so, like, the decline is so steep, it's actually concerning, like, you have to pay attention. Completely, and when you think about it, uh, men are suffering from more, like, erectile dysfunction has oh, yeah. been something that is rampant now. Motivation in, in, in younger men, apathy in younger men. So we're seeing that really men are, are having a tough time showing up, yeah. uh, are having a tough time with those diseases, those, those symptoms that are happening to them and what to do about this. Yeah. So, you know, it's been 12 years that I've been involved in testosterone replacement, testosterone optimization and studying this. And the longer I've been practicing, we realize that our patients are becoming younger and younger. Right. So we have the latest statistics in our clinic. So about 50% of our patients are less than 40 less years than old. 40 years old. 50%. That's a huge number. Yeah. When Most it used of to be patients, an old, old man's disease, right? Or so when you condition. think about low testosterone before, even like you're looking at most advertisement, the guys in low testosterone advertisement have white hair in their mid-50s and up. Right. The reality that what we're seeing, it's not just those men. It's also affecting the younger population. Yeah. So my approach to all this was always, first, let's legitimize that there is a problem. Yeah. Guys are having issues. And what the issues are, uh, how can we boil it down? A lot of times, what determines the way we interact with the world is our hormones. Right. Our hormones are our weakest link. Yeah. You're only as strong as your hormones. Well, they shape behavior. They know, shape our behavior, our interaction with the world. And as we've seen with Dr. J and with Dr. Ramasamy, right. testosterone levels is plunging. So it's not a coincidence that testosterone levels are going down and men's performance is going down, whether that's at work, at home, in their community. So yeah. what can we do about this? And it's funny because, you know, a lot of people, when you talk about the sex hormones, they think it's just about sex, but, you know, testosterone and estrogen are definitely linked in neuroplasticity. So that's one of the areas that we like to focus on is it's not just the body, you know, yeah, muscles and sex are great, but it's the cognitive effects, right? Mm -hmm. It's what it does to a man in terms of clarity of mind and drive and that healthy ambition to be the best that he can be. Completely. So, you know, we're doing this talk now because I really want to talk about the book that I'm writing. Yeah. So, and you've helped me write this book. Yeah. Uh, it's a passion. So the title of the book is Low T Generation, Low Testosterone Generation. Which because is what we're seeing now. A, a complete generation. So again, to go over some statistics now, it's, it's the number of prescriptions for testosterone has more than quadrupled it's over the past 20 years. Incredible. And as we see, it's happening to younger and younger men. Yeah. So what can we do about this? So in my book and in my day-to-day -day practice, yeah. what I'm seeing is testosterone is not an answer to everything. Right. It is not the fountain of youth. It's just a tool. But once a guy comes to our office and then identifies that he has an issue, and it's very difficult to see also because a lot of those guys would have gone to their primary care doctors, to their endocrinologists, and say, Doc, I don't feel good. Right. I'm tired. I have no energy. I have no motivation. All I want to do is just stay here. I'm having problems with libido. It's very hard for a guy to admit this. Yeah. I'm having problems with erections. Right. So it's already hard to it's get a guy nice to go to the doctor. <laughs> now he goes to the doctor. They do basic labs. Right. right? They do a CBC, CMP, Give basic five labs. Minutes. And they're like, yeah. you're fine. Yeah. It's in your head. What does the men do? 
he internalizes all of this. Right. Now it becomes a shameful event for right. him where he's like, oh, well, all my bloods are good, so it's me. I'm a loser. Yeah. I can't believe it this. It becomes part of their identity, which is super dangerous, right? It becomes, as we were saying, the two most powerful words for humans is I am. Yep. So now if you say I am a loser, right. I am you know, tired, right. I am depressed, you become this. Yep. So what we want to do is to reverse this. So first, let me go over the symptoms of low T. Yeah. And a lot of men may recognize themselves with this. Yeah. And by the way, you know, when, when, I'm sorry to cut you off, but it, what he's going about to say is super, super important, right? Because, you know, a lot of times there's so many doctors that focus on the numbers. And we already know that the numbers are, are just kind of ridiculous in their range yeah. to begin with. Um, but symptomatology comes, is, becomes so important. And this is where I think you're an artist at this, and this is, there, there's definitely an art portion to this, and it's that spirit of the healer to be able to listen to the patient. Because as you said, I mean, you know, for, for a man to come to a doctor and admit that he has erectile dysfunction, or he has all these things that are happening now, it's not an easy conversation to, to navigate, right? And most doctors, I don't think, are prepared to have that conversation, because they're just like, they just want to get you here, take this pill, take that, and get out of my office, right? Yeah. Um, and I think that's where you're great, that you kind of get de really deep into the symptomatology to see if the patient can actually benefit from therapy and actually needs it. So if you're listening to this, what should a man do? The first thing is self-assessment. Yeah. How are you doing? Really take a look at yourself. How's your energy? How's your mood? Mm -hmm. How's your relationship with your friends, your significant other? Intimacy. How's your sex drive? How's your intimacy? How's your erections? Um, you know, online you can go and you do the ADAM questionnaire, A-D-A-M. Um, that is a questionnaire that you can do online and it has specific questions to try to see how you're feeling. So the first thing I recommend, do a self-assessment. If you're doing pretty good, keep doing what you're doing. Right. But if you're noticing that you're not your best, you're not performing like you need to, right. we're going to talk how to help you this. And something very important for me. The symptomatology, the phenotype of low testosterone is very wide. Right. It is a spectrum. Yeah. So we have patients who come to us at the lower end of the spectrum. They're fat, they're right. depressed, they have ED, um, they have no energy, they barely can get out of bed. They're just kind that's of all going the way through the motions of life. Low T. Yeah. Then we have the low T patients, that's the higher end of spectrum. Mm -hmm. That's the executive, the ex-athlete, right. that's used to, uh, to operating at 90% of his best. Right. You know, always be on top. Now it's 60%, mm -hmm. 50%. This is the same phenotype. Right. It's just two different windows. That's why sometimes um, the patients will tell me. They're like, I went to the doctor. He looked at me. I have a full beard and I have muscles. He's like, you don't have this low T. Right. Low T. We have a patient of ours who, who actually sent us a picture. The guy is shredded, but he was ex-military. He had traumatic brain injury. He has low T. Right. That affects his brain mostly. Yeah, so time. the book, don't look at just... The patient cover, the, the, cover the book. Exactly. Yeah. So first thing for men, do a self-assessment. Are you satisfied where you are? Right. And if you are, keep doing well. If you feel you can improve, now we're going to talk about the blueprint, the way I counsel my patients on how to get yourself better. And my blueprint is based on four areas of health. Right. So if you're a man and you look at this and you're like, wow, I'm 50%, I'm 20%, what can I do? Number one, lowest hanging fruit of wellness, nutrition. Nutrition. We need to improve our nutrition. Yeah. You can't expect to eat crap and to perform well. And feel well. <laughs> and feel well. So first thing you're gonna do, if you don't feel great, look at areas of nutrition that you can improve. Correct. As we always say, go back to the basics. Eat whole foods. Don't eat all the processed foods. Yeah. So Definitely buy organic meats. Organic meats, so yeah. protein. Yeah. Prioritize protein, yeah. prioritize whole foods, go organic, mm -hmm. um, calories, you need to pay attention to calories, yeah. but it's mostly the quality of the foods. Yeah. Protein, whole foods, organic, and control your calories. Yeah. I don't even endorse any specific diet. I'm not gonna tell you do keto. I'm not yeah. gonna tell you do paleo. Mediterranean. If it works for you, you know, whatever works. But the important thing is you need to improve your nutrition, right? For, for sure. So that's bubble number one. Yeah. Bubble number two, exercise, movement. So important. Yeah, the pillars of wellness, right? So, so important. So before we do anything else, we need to optimize those two. And when I talk about exercise, it's not just exercise 
um, you go and take a leisurely walk with your dog. Man. Yeah, that's good too. But you know what? Gets As men, you need intensity. resistance training. Yeah, you yeah, need yeah. to lift weights. You need to push things. You need to lift things. Yeah, yeah. You need resistance training. And I'm going to go further, especially as you get older. I used to play a lot of basketball, a lot of racquetball, very competitive. As you get older, you lose that competitive edge. Yeah. So you need to do some kind of exercise that includes competition. Yeah. Even competition against yourself. Of course. So me, mostly I work out at home. So I'll have competition against myself. Yeah. Can I lift a little more? Can I One do more a little rep. more? One more <laughs> rep without injuring myself. Right, right, I'm right. 52 now, so yeah. I gotta be careful. <laughs> but, so two, two pillars of wellness so far. Nutrition. Nutrition exercise, exercise and exercise related to weight training, resistance training, Correct. and competition. Yeah. And number three, the top bubble, that's the big one. It's health optimization. Yeah. And this is when, as the MD, I can help a lot. So health optimization, including hormone optimization, hormone optimization. sleep optimization. Yeah. Maybe in thyroid issues, right? Yeah, so, yeah, so that's why when patients come to us, this is what we do. We do a complete set of labs more than you would ever get at your primary care Correct. physician, For sure. where we look at all your different systems, yeah. and then we can identify where you have any deficiencies. And we can plug in those numbers and correct those deficiencies. Yeah, and I think, you know, this is, this is the area that people, I think, you know, me being on the patient side and, and speaking to people that call, is this is the area that people get the most burnout and frustration, right? Because you know, we all know that we should eat well and exercise. Great, we know that. Now, if you're someone that hasn't done that and now you put yourself into the plan and you start doing all the right things, you can do all the right things. I mean, you can have a great workout routine, you could be, you know, eating really clean, but if, you're, if you have micronutrient or biochemical deficiencies like your hormones, and this is something that we're seeing as an epidemic now, um, I don't care how much working out you do, I don't care how well you eat, you're gonna, you're gonna reach burnout, you're gonna, you're gonna plateau, and this, this is the era where people get really frustrated and they go back to that identity thing. Well, you know, I've, you know I, I eat well and I exercise often, you know, working is now, it's just not for me, it's not in my genetics, I am fat, or yeah. I am this. Yeah. And now it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy where they don't understand that this huge component to be able to hold nutrition and, and, and uh, exercise together is your hormonal side, right? Which is super important. So again, well said. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm building my blueprint, right? right? Remember, and you'll see that uh, my, my, my concept, the blueprint is four intersecting bubbles. So I'm going to repeat, we have nutrition, yep. we have exercise, on top we have health optimization. That includes your hormones, that includes your sleep, includes your thyroid. Yep. So I do a full exam. Do you have sleep apnea? Yeah. Do you have thyroid problem? Do you have parathyroid problem? Right. Do you have insulin resistance? Do you have low T? Do you have high Iron deficiency. Iron yeah. deficiency. Yeah. So as DMD, that's where I can help. Yeah. But that's only one component. Right. So we have nutrition, exercise, health oh. optimization, and the fourth bubble at the bottom, one of the most important ones, mindset. mindset. My God. The, the ones in me as a physician was trained into just learning the science of things, once I understood that mindset mm -hmm. is the most important component, it changed my practice and it changed my results for my patients. Yeah. So I will have a lot of patients who we'll have three out of the bubbles. They, they, they exercise, they eat well, hormones they have the right nice. mindset, right. but their hormones are bad. Right. I don't care how much you do that. If you have low T or, or hypothyroidism, you're not going to get your results. No. So, and the mindset is harder to hold. I have the opposite, where you have patients who do good nutrition, good exercise regimen, all their hormones are good. And they have terrible they mindset. they have terrible mindset. Yeah. You know what? You're not going to be the best version of yourself. And again, the goal for me, again, you know, uh, one of my Instagram is Dr. Rudy Best Life. Because yeah. my goal for everybody is to help you live your best life, whatever your definition of best life is. Yeah. But to get there, you need all of those bubbles. And I, and I think that you have, you know, you've come up with a great definition of the modern man, right? Because, yeah. and for me, it was when you came up with it, it was really cool because, you know, I'm, I'm, I like theology and all this stuff. And so when you look at what is the definition of a man? Well, it really depends who you ask, right? Um, and I think that you have a great concept of what the modern man should kind of look like, which is, by the way, what we look like before, right? Being leaders and being in shape and being able to provide.